grand rising loves. Ah, oh, I'm stretching. <laughs> this is the altar spread for the collective today, double two, October 22nd. And ah, oh, what a morning already. So Luna and the volcano showed up. Now I love this. I have to mention this because years ago, I was told that I affect the collective. And I always thought that was laughable. And so I was, um, I've always been very psychic and spiritual, but to the point of seeing myself as something grand or all as one was really difficult for me to wrap my head around because I thought so little of myself. It, it wasn't that I felt that I wasn't connected because I definitely knew that I could summon the rain and summon wind and that's all powerful, right? But it's because it comes from a place of love and intent that they, that they come to me when I beckon them. And, um, and it was not out of um, any display of power, you know? I'm, I'm not a stage act psychic and um, so even when I hold outdoor sessions, even my clients have said, wow, it's crazy. Every time we're outside, the wind shows up for you. And, and it's true, she does. And it, it's my extreme reverence and love for her that that happens. But I was told that I affect the collective and that I will always be experiencing things long before the collective does and it'll roll out. And so I started noticing um, as I got older in my spiritual journey and became more aware of, of that playing out because I was told that multiple times and I usually don't listen until I, I get something in threes. So when I'm told something a third time, it, it sends off this spidey sense in me. Okay, pay attention. <laughs> and, um, and so maybe you have some inner um, switch like that too. Like I'm not even going to pay attention to this message until it comes however many. But anyhow, um, when I do this deep inner work, really deep inner work and I get cards, I start seeing them show up for the collective and that's exciting to me. And so this is one of them that was showing up for me often. And um, it's this dormant potential. Okay, and the dormant potential is going to be powerful when it when it shifts into transformation and change. It's like the sleeping volcano, but the volcano that you know is active, so it's smoldering and it's this ever constant potential. So you have to have this great reverence for it, but you can't ever be ready because you don't know when it's going to blow and when the transformation is going to happen. So you have to learn how to be adaptable and how to just surrender. And um, surrender was a very hard thing for me. And it still is. I'm not going to lie. You know, let's, let's be real about this. Surrender is difficult, especially in intimate settings for me, um, to feel safe. And so... Of course, in transformation, you can always feel this impending power. So it feels almost scary, like you want to brace yourself, but you have to breathe past the bracing and soften. That's intense and it's even more powerful. And so Luna and the volcano brings that message. Change is imminent and the transformation is not going to be gentle but you can't be prepared for it. The only thing you can do is just know that it's gonna happen so that when it does happen, it's always for your highest good and just ride it and surrender, flow with it. Be receptive to it. And so this has um, the sacred geometry of the flower of life and the seed of life. And of course, the, power, the pyramid is directive power. That's, and the circle. Luna always represents feminine energy. 
So this is everything, masculine, feminine, the directive of masculine energy, but the receptiveness of feminine energy. And so that's a very powerful, transformative card. And I was so excited when I saw the poll today. And I think it's only ever shown up like one other time. And um, I don't even remember if it was in the reverse or not. I've been doing these for a while now. So it was exciting and I wanted to share that. And so the seer showed up. This is also very exciting because this talks about the awakening of psychic gifts. Now I have um, in the past, not anymore because I've really put that boundary, people calling me to help them awaken their psychic gifts. That's not what I'm about. If that is what your aim is, you are on the wrong path and I'm not the one. I'm about helping people heal so they remember who the fuck they are. Everyone is born intuitive and connective. Not everyone is psychic. And if you are looking for that, those are the people that are willing to um, let down their high integrity to work in the realms of magic because they get frustrated that certain things are not happening for them. Um, and I'm going to give you a very specific example. I used to teach um, groups of um, psychic adults and I was meeting these adults in my meditation um, people would hire me privately or I would teach meditation and I would hand select these groups because I knew that they would jive so well together and um, so the first group that I ever had was the best hands down and Literally half of that group watches my spread every morning. Good morning, ladies. I love you. <laughs> um, but they have stayed in touch and they became such a close-knit group and I love that. And that's what I wanted. I wanted people to meet other people like them to help them through the awakening process to kind of jumpstart that circling of souls, which is really important in spiritual journey to have other like-minded individuals to bounce things off of, to have conversations with, and that was a luxury that I never had, and still don't. Um, I have very precious few that I can actually talk to where I don't have to edit, and, um, and it can be a really lonely journey sometimes. But anyhow, there was one particular woman in that group who started um, calling the other women outside of the group and saying, do you feel like you're even learning anything? <laughs> and the, the whole point of the group was not for me to teach them psychic gifts, but to help them fine tune the gifts they had. And because they were all psychic, all of them, not were, are, they are all psychic and in hiding and doubting themselves. Anyhow, um, in, in a great honor, they actually express themselves the way that I would hope that that's not what we're here for. We're here to learn about ourselves. And I have felt myself get stronger in this. Anyhow, the, the group, it was only supposed to be temporary, and I know that a lot of the women would have liked this to go long term. But, um, but anyway, the, the group ended, and this particular woman um, continued to text me and try to get me to work for free for her, ended up going down into Mexico and having literally an all day session with a, a bruja down there and um, a bruja that claimed that she had um, demonic energy attached to her. She spent the whole day, spent thousands of dollars um, and also told her that she would be able to become more powerful, whatever. Anyhow, it was bullshit. So that's not how I work. And I actually had a conversation with her um, that I wouldn't be answering her anymore, that she's on a different path than I am. I am on a spiritual path. 
And I hope beyond all hoping that I transcend this body and don't come back again. I'm banking on this being my last human experience. And so I have never been anything than in my highest integrity. And I have never done anything or said anything that wasn't from a pure heart. So everything that I am working towards comes from that place. And I have fine tuned that growing up because I have not always been that. I have not always been in my highest integrity, but I can say without a doubt, I am always in my highest integrity. I am. And that's the path that I am on. And I want to help as many as I can on that path to transcendence. But it is very, very important to me that those people are on that same path. I'm not about trying to help someone that is operating from a place of ego. And um, I was recently reached out by someone whom I've actually had to bind in the ether multiple times for doing very horrible spells on people and misuse of energy and gifts. And um, she had the audacity to call me for a session and I was like, no, and I know who you are. And she denied it, but she knows. And if she's watching this video, she'll probably be the one thumbs down on this. Um, but I can decide whom I work with and whom I don't. And that's the discernment that the seer has. And so that's the gift that is coming up in the spread today. It's that psychic discernment of deciphering messages from spirit and realms that are not of this earth realm. And it does not adhere to the rules of any lower dimensional existence, 3D or less, like the two dimensional map, right? Or the three dimensional earth, because we are leveling up and you are awakening those. And this is not for everybody, like I said. And so those of you who are watching this, this is meant for you. You wouldn't be watching this if it wasn't meant for you that your um, psychic sense is awakening and your discernment will be keen. And so use that to help propel you through the experience because there is imminent change coming. And remember, you cannot be prepared for it. And there is something you need to know about psychic gifts that they do not work for yourself. And I think that is meant to keep us humble. So, of the most powerful psychics I know, myself included, my gifts do not work for myself. So I have to um, make decisions based on intuition and that spidey sense, but I cannot see my own future. And um, so I just have to know that everything is potential change. Everything is the dormant volcano or the awakening volcano, right? So every experience is new. I have to remind myself this is new. This is new. As ancient as my soul is and wants to go into that cell memory, I have to constantly bring myself back to that zero. This is new. And so turquoise has shown up many times. I love turquoise and I love that it's a storm card and I love that storm cards have been showing up for the collective. I am like elated. <laughs> I love this because storm cards are all chakras. So if we're getting stones that are awakening all of your chakras for the collective, let's get it on. Let's let's do this. Let's shake shit up because this is going to heal the fear that's like that soupy, really heavy energy in the collective right now because fear is closing hearts. And it's really gross. It's really dense energy. And so I, I'm like all about getting this, this energy shaken up. So these are the turquoise that I use actually in my healing sessions. And I have jewelry with turquoise, but um, I need a nice big personal piece. 
and I was actually in Moab and I was gonna get a nice piece of turquoise for myself I was actually in the shop looking and I was literally the only one in the shop and the clerk came over and he said can you put on your mask and I said uh, why and he said, because I'm wearing one. And I said, thank you. And I said, but literally, I'm the only one in the shop. And you are like 12 feet away from me. And he goes, well, then I don't want you in here. And I said, thank you for telling me that. Because I don't want to spend my money here. So he can keep his stones. And I send love to all the stones that are captive in that shop. To that fear-based clerk. <clears throat> but isn't that beautiful? It has like these beautiful copper flecks. I love them. I love turquoise. It's so beautiful. It can be like this really deep green or this turquoise, thus the name turquoise. It's beautiful. But what turquoise brings a message of is integrating all of your parts, becoming whole. So what turquoise actually does will show you parts of yourself that maybe you're not aware of that need to be integrated, like the shadow aspects, right? Because a lot of times we can self-sabotage on the spiritual path because we fear the very change that we desire. Oh my gosh, if I'm not this, what am I? And then you kind of sabotage yourself so that you can stay where you're at because it's what you know and it feels comfortable, right? Even though it's really not, it's why you're exhausted and why you feel excruciatingly miserable. And so turquoise will shed light on those spaces where you've got shadow aspects of yourself tucked away that need to be integrated. And so even if you are kind and you're a people pleaser and you're loving, there's this aspect of you that is probably manipulative because you seek your worth in that giving. So it's all about intent too. Does your intent actually come from a place that's not of pure heart? And so turquoise will show you that so that you can integrate those things and become more whole. Because when you are whole, you are balanced and your intent corrects itself. Because you no longer want to hold anyone captive to your needs and desires. And so everything comes from the highest integrity. And I, I love that because that's the cohesiveness of this, right? Imminent change. So this is the potential of change and really powerful, explosive change. But you are gifted the discernment of psychic gifts to get the guidance to go through that. So even though it's going to be intense, like the eruption of a volcano, you're going to be able to steer yourself through that and integrate your parts so that you're prepared for it. But Alakwa, the spirit of the warrior, this talks about the spiritual warrior is always in his highest integrity and it cannot know any other way but truth. And so if there is any area in your life that you're not being honest about or truthful about, then you are not that. It's plain and simple. You are not that. And so you have to come clean. And um, for me, it's easy. I don't have anyone to answer to. And, um, and it's always been easy, even in relationship, for me to be uber honest. And um, because I always taught my kids, I'm like, you know what? I am too lazy to lie. It's a lot of fucking work to lie. It is a lot of work. You have to remember shit. And, um, and I don't ever operate from my intellect. Literally, my intellect is empty. I don't think before I speak. It just comes through me, comes through me, comes through me, all the dialogue. And so lying means that I would have to store shit in there, right? And... Um, and then you start making your decisions and intent all come from ego instead of the heart. 
and it's just it's heavy and it's gross and um, I just wish 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 that um, I could see that in when I'm in an intimate relationship because the universe kind of brings me lessons by way of people that operate that way and it's kind of gross but um, but it's okay thank you universe I humbly thank you for every experience. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, so the spiritual warrior, Lakwa, talks about the truth. And all the truth needs to happen right now so that you can progress because you are stepping in to that role of the spiritual warrior so that you can create the utopic existence that you crave. So, I mean, you can't get better than that, right? So just telling the truth and you're gonna see how it frees you, right? And so if you're afraid to share the truth because you think on the under, other end of that, that the people that you've been holding captive to those lies are gonna step away, yeah, they might. And then they might just surprise you and be forgiving, which I had one of my clients tell me, she said, you know, I really was convicted by this, um, by the coming, coming clean and telling the truth. So she shared something with her husband, but in her ego mind, it already created a scenario where he was gonna be like, sorry, this is not forgivable. And so she was preparing herself for that. Like, okay, I'm gonna have to go. And when he was loving instead and held her through that, she said, I don't even know what to do because I can't even forgive myself now. So think about that. Is that also you sabotaging yourself, right? So coming into that change, like Turquoise says, can you integrate that instead of sabotaging yourself? And so lies really are, if you think about it, a kind of self-sabotage too. So I may or may not get found out. And lies always get revealed in the end, by the way. Like people saying, I'm going to carry this to the grave. That's a fucking lie. Shit always gets revealed somewhere on the line. Just know that. Especially now with the vibration rising and people's psychic gifts awakening, your shit's going to be revealed. So it's better you reveal it yourself than have it revealed by others and have it be really explosive and ugly. Maybe that's your change. I don't know. Yeah. I want to share this with you. I don't, I'm not going to share all my cards today, but um, if you are, I've been off of social media for a while and I shared an alien transmission. It was um, a beautiful woman channeling an alien and we had a very short conversation literally two minutes and um, and I knew that I was being watched very closely because it mentioned things that I would say only in private session and it talked about me going off of social media and needing to go back and also to keep dancing and I do I always dance between